All right, now in this video, we're gonna be talking about server aliases with SQL Server. I'll show you how to create them, and then we'll talk about why you need them. All right, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing. So we've got two SQL servers here, BLD, and then this 10.0.0.45. So what we wanna do is we need to write a procedure that moves data from the BLD server, which we'll pretend is our on-prem server. And we wanna move the data to this 10.0.0.45 server. We're gonna pretend that's our cloud server. So we wanna push data to the cloud. Let's just suppose, okay? So now how do you move data between SQL servers? Well, in order to do that, you would come down here to server objects and you'd create a linked server. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'd right click, new linked server. You'd enter the IP address here with the, the, the host name, 10.0.0.45 in our case. Choose SQL Server, come down to Security, and you'd enter your logon info. Normally you would probably not use the SA account, but I'm going to, because this is just a demo. And now we have a linked server. And now you can even browse the tables here. All right, and the table we want it, we're interested in is, let's suppose our salesperson table. So let's select records from here, okay? But now look, whenever you wanna query that table that's on another SQL server, you have to preface it with the host name or IP address, right? That matches our linked server, of course. So why is this problematic? Well, normally when you do development, you do it in a development environment. So what happens when you go to push this code to production? It's probably gonna break because the production cloud server is gonna be different. It's gonna have a different IP address or host name, end host name, right? So this code will not work. So now what do you have to do? You have to make changes directly in production, which as we know, breaks all the rules, right? And is dangerous. Um, so how do you resolve this? Well. Let's go ahead and create a server alias and take a look at how we do it that way. Now, to create a link server is pretty straightforward. You come down to your SQL Server configuration. All right, and under here, your uh, native client configuration, you click aliases. All right, you right click, you can create a new alias. Now you can name your alias. You can name this anything you want, okay? So we'll call this, um, Cloud SQL Server, okay? Port number, we'll use the default port, 1433. That's the default SQL Server port. Leave TCP IP. And here's where we'll enter the server name. So 10.0.0.45 in our case, okay? Click, click, click apply and okay. And now we've got our alias. But how do you use it? Now to use it, it's pretty straightforward. Remember, we've created this alias, so SQL knows what it is, okay? So to use it, let's create another linked server, and then we call it Cloud SQL Server, okay? Let's use SQL Server. Again, we'll enter our logon info. And now look at this, we can replace this with our new alias and our query works. So now in the production environment, all we have to do is create this same alias in our production environment, Cloud SQL Server, point it to the production IP address, which may be 10.0.0.145, who knows, right? Doesn't matter. And now this code, when we move this from development to production, it will still work because we don't need to change this. As long as that alias is pointing to the right server, it'll go to the right place. So dev, the alias will point to the development server. Production, the alias will point to the production server and the code remains consistent. Now, that's probably the best use case I can think of for using server aliases. But let's ask the Terminator what she thinks. Terminator, give me a use case for server aliases with SQL Server. Server aliases can be used in SQL Server to provide an alternate name for a server, which can be used in applications to connect to the server. 
For example, if you have a server with an IP address of 10.0.0.1, you can create an alias of my server for that IP address, which can then be used in applications to connect to the server. This makes it easier to remember the server name instead of its IP address. There you go. Thanks so much for watching, but please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell.